we do? J. Steve, I'm back. What's going on, guys? Hey, long time don't see. Y'all know it is. Thank you guys for tuning in to Bronx 83. I'm still thinking about that channel name. And today's topic is going to be about mathematics or mathematics for IVs, liquid, general, and some gear to just test. So I'm going to try to keep it as simple so it doesn't confuse anyone. I'm going to probably try to talk as slow. But I want to just give you guys basic maths. Now, let me give you the background about basic math just for a second. So in pharmacy, basic maths are just conversion. And believe it or not, if you are in retail or you're in a hospital, look at your IV bag, look at your um, powder reconstitution. It's right there. I'm going to show you a couple formula, and I'm going to keep it simple because it can get very intricate. And what I mean by intricate for people who think it doesn't get complicated. Here's one idea, for example. One, one ml. Let's, let's start with one ml, or otherwise known as CC. Now, some people stay away from CC for retail. Some people use mls just because of the confusion when inputting a prescription. But let's start with just one CC. Now, for example, this is how compli complicated it can be. For billing eye drops that are liquid, one ml has 20 drops. But, Let's say you're doing insulin like I refer in my top 10 question. 1 ml also have 100 units. Now that's helpful when you're doing insulin, Procrit. Now a lot of people might say, what is Procrit? What's insulin? Definitely guys, look it up. Use your research. The internet's right there. Definitely just look it up. But I'm just trying to show you that, you know, it can be so complicated. Now for IVs, 1 ml could just be 1 ml. But 1 ml could equal so much milligrams of the drug that's being given. So I'm gonna try simplify this. I'm gonna try to tell you. So background log about math in pharmacies for me is most time you calculate the doses that the child, adult needs, whether it's an oral solution or a IV. But to be honest with you, not taking anything away because I got I want you guys to still know what's going on, is that with technology now and pharmacy being so advanced, most things you do are already printed on the label. Some people might say, wait, J. Steve, that's not true. Well, keep in mind, some doctors will write the milligram and you have to figure it out. And I have a formula for that. And some doctors for hospital will write the milligrams and the pharmacist has to figure it out. Uh, for taking the exams, they will ask you mathematical questions. They'll probably ask you, if something has this much milligrams with this much fluid and it runs for this long, if I cut the time in half, how long is the person's getting? So I got some pictures, I got some diagram I'm gonna go through with some IV things and show you guys the calculation of how to do some of this stuff. I'm gonna keep it very simple so it does not confuse you. Please guys, like, subscribe, share the video, pause the video, look at the video, Listen to what I'm saying. I'm going to try and make it not as confusing as possible. But I want to give you the basic way just to do certain maths to answer certain questions when doing the boards, certain questions when just asked by a pharmacy, or even if you think the dose is just wrong by when the doctor put it in. These questions can help you guys, you know what I mean, just simplify certain things. And I will try my best not to make it confuse you because trust me, it's maths. And for anyone who love algebra or geometry, well, algebra actually, you're going to use an XY, I call it a cross multiplication, cross multiplication, Google that guys, cross multiplication. So in this segment, we're going to be working with liters, milliliters, um, and cross multiplication. We're going to keep it really simple. All right, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay guys, here's some ready to use IV bag. And ready to use just means that these bags come with specific dose and specific volume. Let's do some basic calculation. All right, first up we got magnesium two gram total. Look right above the word magnesium. You see it says 50 mLs, And look right down below where it says injection. So this is 40 milligram per one. Let's see if we can figure this right, math guys, out. Here's some basic calculation. And I have to write it out so I don't take too long in the video. So. First of all, you guys have to know your, your conversion. You gotta know your liters, you gotta know your milligrams. That's gonna help you guys a lot. Google it, study it, memorize it, get it done, that way you know how to convert it. So just a while ago you saw a picture of the magnesium two gram in 50 mLs. So let's convert and do some basic maths. 
pretty much if you guys know what two gram is in milligram, two gram is the same as two thousand milligram. There is a thousand milligram in one gram. So two gram equals two thousand milligram. So pretty much in layman's term, that IV bag you saw pretty much is saying instead of saying two G's into fifty mLs, it's two thousand milligram into fifty ml. Now, part of the video also showed you that 441. How did they get 441 if the bag was 2,000 milligram per 50 ml? Well, if you divide the 50 ml into the 2,000, let's see what we get. So, 2,000 milligram divided by 50 ml equals 40 milligram. So, pretty much what they're trying to tell you is that 40 milligram is in each ml so keep in mind guys not confusing you there's 50 mls in that bag each ml equals 40 milligrams so if the patient gets a total of 50 ml they get a total of 2000 milligrams or 2 grams if the patient gets 1 ml they get 40 milligram. If the patient gets 2 ml, they get 80 milligram. You see what I'm saying? So each ml equals 40 milligram. If they get an entire bag of 50 ml, they get 2. So to get that answer, all you have to do sometimes is just divide your ml into what the total milligrams of that bag or convert it from grams to milligrams, divide it, and you'll get your smallest dose in that bag. Let's revisit that video. All right, guys, let's move on to the next bag real quick. And trust me, I'm going to answer your question because I know your mind is thinking. So the next bag we have is Kepra. Now, you see how this one doesn't say one gram. It actually says 1,000 milligram. That's the same thing as one gram. And it's telling you that it's 1,000 milligram per 100 ml. So this bag is actually 100 ml. You see where it says parentheses 10 milligram per ml? Get your calculator out and divide 100 into 1000 and you'll get your answer in that one. Okay, trust me, I'm going to explain some things to you guys. Just, just hold up. Now we have Cipro. It says 400 milligram into 200 ml. You see where it says 2 milligram slash ml? Get your calculator and divide 200 milligram 200 ml, sorry guys, 200 ml into 400 milligram and tell me what answer you get. Now, what's significant about this? Pretty much what it is is telling you that if the doctor wants half the strength, you have to give half the dose. So if they want 200 milligrams, you have to give them 100 ml. These are the questions they're going to try to trick you with when they ask you certain IV rates. And I'll explain that in detail. All right, guys, so here's two drugs, but two different strengths. Is it two different strength really? Or is it two different volume that equal two different strength? The one on the left says fluconazole 200 milligram per 100 ml. The one on the right says fluconazole 400 milligram per 200 ml. Here's a confusion. When you look in parentheses, it says two milligram per ml. Very confusing, right? Not really. One is two times the dose. One has 100 ml. The other one has 200 ml. So this is why you have to be careful when calculating certain stuff. Same principle apply when dealing with oral suspension. Divide 250 by 5. Divide 125 by 5. That's it, guys. So here's a summed up. Now for the mag. Mag short for magnesium. Now what if you didn't know that each ml in that magnesium bag equals 40 milligrams? How can we find out? Let's do some cross multiplication. They did give us two key ingredients. They told you that you had 2G 50 mLs, right? Let's convert that real quick and then do some cross multiplication. We know for a fact that 2Gs equals 2,000 milligrams. We're going to keep the mLs the same. We're going to put 50 mLs, okay? Now, 
they want you to find out how much milligrams is in each ml. So you know 2G over 50 is the same as 2,000 milligram over 50, okay? We're going to go ahead and put what you're asking us, which is, or you can put the word equal, sorry, or times, either, either one. You're going to put a line here, and you're going to put what you know, which is what they're asking you is 1 ml times x. x is what you're trying to figure out, okay? So on the back, it already told you that it's 40 milligram per 1 ml is the same as 2g in 50 or 2,000 milligram in 50. But if you didn't know that, how would you get it? Well, let's do some cross multiplication. So you convert, first of all, your 2g to 2,000. You keep your 50 the same because it's 50 mls. And let's multiply this by this, this by x, and divide, and let's see if we can get what the bag says. So when I multiply 50 by x, I'm going to get 50 mls, in a sense, x, okay? When I multiply 2,000 by 1, I'm going to get 2,000 still, right? Right? Now, if you guys remember algebra, you want to get x by itself. So how do you get x by itself? You pretty much divide the same thing to get x by itself. Now this cancels, and that leaves x by itself. But if you divide 50 into 50 to get x by itself, guess what you have to do now? Divide 50 into 2,000. And what do you get, guys, when you divide that? X equals 40 milligrams. So 1 ml is the same right here. Okay? That's a little bit about cross-multiplication. All right, guys, that was a brief lesson on pharmacy mathematics. It can go very intricate, but I only have 15 minutes. But here's the thing. If you guys don't get it, reach out to me. I've answered back to every single one of my subscriber and I answer back right away key things to remember guys the doctor is gonna write a prescription and they're gonna want to know pretty much what to give the patient based on their weight their age their size their height all you have to do is figure out the smallest dose and normally the smallest dose is gonna be 1 ml Try find out how many milligrams in that ml and then multiply, multiply back. So when you do your test, your exams, you're going to see a lot of questions that says a patient, like let's use mag, a patient is getting mag 2 gram and it takes one hour to run. Okay, simple, mag 2 gram, one hour to run. They're going to ask you questions like if it runs for a half an hour, how much milligram did a person get? All you have to do, convert the two gram into all the milligrams. You know that if one hour is 50 mLs, then a half an hour has to be one gram. Simple. Ask me question, guys. Cross multiplication will help you find a lot of stuff too. Another thing they might ask you is, they might say to you, a patient is getting um, mLs instead of milligrams. They might say the patient's getting 50 mLs of magnesium. And they might say 50 mLs equals 2 gram. They might say to you, how many mLs does a patient need to get to equal 4 grams? Well, obviously, you know 50 equals 2, then 100 equals 4. Those are the questions they're going to try to trick you with, guys. So get in my inbox, share a video, like, ask any question you need that it wasn't self-explanatory so I can help you guys out there. It was short and trust me, when you're trying to get everything within 50 minutes, you're going to miss certain stuff. But I'm here to help you. So just bombard me with a question. I'm here. I answer back. Thank you for all my new subscribers. It is 9.38 and I've been working on this video since about 4 o'clock since I get home. Try not making it confusing for anyone. Love you guys. Thanks for subscribing. Share the video. Like. J. Steve. Out.